Hello and welcome. I am the Restless Kaiser. And I'm Woolly Mike. But together we are Modeling for Advantage! Yay! Well, furthermore, we delve into mid-war in the desert with the British Armoured Fist. Armoured Fist. Armoured Fist, sir. I'll get this box open. Uh, it contains... Have you got a list there, I've sir? I've got a list here, You yes. tell them, you tell them. Six Crusader tanks. Ooh. Three Grant tanks. Ooh, American boo. Three Valentines. Nice. Three Churchills. Very nice. Four 25 pounder guns. Incomplete without. Two Daimler armoured car, armored cars. One Dingo armoured car. We're going to check that. A complete A5 rule book. Nice. The British Start Here book. Decal sheets and unit cards. Beautiful. This is a deep, deep box. So according to that, there's 18 vehicles and... Four guns. So Four that's, guns. that's 22 items. Yeah. I think there's 19 vehicles in here. Because I think we're going to get a Daimler... We're going to get two dingoes. Yeah. Because I've seen the sprue before. <laughs> <laughs> uh, right, you that? Yeah. Oh, look at that. On that lime green plastic. Oh, beautiful. <laughs> it's so satisfying, these. So these... Yeah. these um, army boxes that they do you generally get around 20 vehicles they're generally 80 pound us i think 100 dollars so you're paying four pound a vehicle which is nearly half price what they cost in the retail kits right i'll put sort of stuff out and be right back right british in the desert armored fist now i don't normally talk about things like box art but this british forces in north africa sir i love the kind of victor comic look yeah of this there is something as an englishman about <laughs> fighting rommel in the desert in your shorts, shorts. Uh, yeah with knee length socks oh sleeves rolled up it's 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 keeping the british end yeah. up sir there's even there's even a couple of spitfires <clears throat> in the in the background there, uh, so. well, I think that one's a hurricane. hurricane yes that one's a hurricane yeah that one's probably a hurricane too yeah but anyway there's something iconic right down to the guy Sat on the floor. Daka, 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 daka. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> firing the Vickers machine gun. The, the, to me, that is the symbol of World yeah. War II. Someone like, yeah. ah! Yeah. You know, killing Nazis, sir. That yeah. is what it is all about. Yeah. Anyway. My, my granddad was a brain gunner for the Royal Hampshire's in the Desert War. So. Very nice, sir. And, and a fine man he was too, I'm sure. <laughs> um, so uh, these little paper booklets, they're both your weapon... Your weapons, the weapons, and both your instruction set um, and guide, and it's got some of the unit information. This you want to have a look at this if you want to be playing the Desert War, and you want to use the cards that they have provided. So there will be versions of the Valentine, versions of the Churchill that they haven't given you a card for um, in this set because it's a starter set. You know, if you're, if you're serious about it, you'll need to go away and get some of those other cards or whatever from elsewhere. But they are. They're here, it's it's great, with decent instructions. So what I propose we do, Mike, is you pull up a sprue, and there's a lot of different sprues in here. Uh, you pull up a sprue, and I'll look at the relevant card and talk about the yeah. numbers. Um, I haven't had a look at it. We've got several versions of tanks, but we've got several versions of those versions of tanks. So Yes, indeed. So what are you going for first? Sir? I've got one that's been seen before, the Valentine. The Valentine. Right, so we have two Valentine cards by the looks of things. Yeah, so this you, you are eligible to build a couple of varieties. So there's the Valentine 2, which is a which is a very early uh, version of the Valentine. Two pound a gun or 40 millimeter if you yeah, want it in the exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So your your basic one has got an eight-inch tactical move, it's slow, but it's got six front armor, six side armor. An anti tank power of seven, five power four plus, no HE, like all the mm. two pounder guns. It isn't that they didn't make a two, uh, an HE shell for the two pounder, it's that the bursting charge on a two pounder was so small that they didn't really bother issuing it because it wasn't very effective. Um, you've also unfortunately got the overworked rule, yeah, it's only on, on this because I think it's only got a two man turret, 
or it's quite cramped. It's three man crew. Uh, a couple of versions did actually go to four man crew. Yeah. Uh, the two that we're going to be building are both three man crews. So you then have the option to take it as a Valentine 2 and 7. So you've got in that, you get two Valentine 2s and one Valentine 7. And the Valentine 7 has got the six pounder gun, but with less side armor and with no machine, no machine gun. So your six pounder, of course, has got an anti-tank power of 10. It's actually the Valentine 8, by the way. But... Valentine 8, <laughs> not 7, is quite right. I could, see, I could see the number, just failed to read it. Uh, so that's your Valentine. It's confident, it's trained, and it's an infantry tank. So it's not reckless. <laughs> like a yeah. lot of the, the British cruiser tanks are all, I think, aggressive. They're quite easy to hit. But the yeah. infantry tanks tend to have uh, tend to have the careful thing. The, in, the side side interest of this is mm, the when, sprue. when you go to the tank museum in Bovington, there's yeah. one of these next to an M3 Honey, and this is smaller than the M3. Yes, <laughs> it's a very very small compact tank. Yes, it's also the most widely um, produced tank yeah. by Britain during the war. I think the thing about the the Valentine um, in terms of its production. I'm just looking at the sprue and you can see how many different turret options there are on here uh, and different gun mantlets yep. for your different versions. Um, is we went in, we, our approach to war production was that you can't keep chopping and changing it all the time or you will end up with nothing. So they would decide what they were building for the next year. Yeah. Valentine comes into service at a point when she's probably not that great but she's okay yeah. and we end up shipping thousands of them off to the russians yeah. we use them in the desert but we quickly get the american tanks the canadians even started building them later in the war as well right so yeah yeah key point i know is that you can get the two pounder and the six pounder versions mm. two turret pegs oh again so you can you can swap them out and there is the, yeah. there's only one upper hull there are two different hatch types, but they're for the two different turret types, yeah. right? Yep, okay. So that works so you can build both of the turrets, yep. Although there are three mantlets, presumably it's the two pounder, the six pounder, and is there a CS version? Then maybe there is, but not but not yeah. in this set. But it will tell you in the instructions precisely which yeah. of these mantlets goes with which of these guns. He <coughs> says, with more confidence than he deserves. Yep, it does, it does. It shows you which gun goes in which mantlet yeah. yeah absolutely all right it's tidy spirit i've not built any of these i've not done any british tanks except for the american import stuff so <laughs> right yeah, yeah. I, I i have built these um and uh maybe three or four of them because yeah. in our early games of flame of flames when we learned the system we had the old l alamein starter set yeah and, and I think that might have had a Valentine in it. I the, definitely have some the Valentine. Stalin, Stalingrad set had a Valentine the Stalingrad in it. Stalingrad set had yeah. a Valentine so, set in it as yeah. well, yeah. S straightforward. Yep, yeah, really. Light that. tank. Nice. Yeah. Um, uh, you know, the, the, the running gear is all sculpted into a single piece. It's keyed. You're not going to get it wrong. There's three keying points on one side of one. There's two keying yeah. points on the other. Like most of their kits, they, they really know what they're doing. They've got this track. There is something about this colouring in the plastic. Which, which is in, in the light here, the bits of it are a little little bit see-through. I've not come across that before. But that, that's just... Yeah, it's just the, the density. I think the, the plastic is pretty strong. Yeah, well, yeah, when yeah, you got, yeah. When you get the main body, obviously it's thicker. But yeah, there is some there is some, some glowing some, through. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's, it's uh, interesting. But we've got some pretty strong lights in here. Though. Yeah. Anyway. Um, so next vehicle, sir. Good old Churchill. Big Good old, old Churchill. Beast of a tank. Okay. So, uh, oh, for mid-war, the Churchill is a royal beast. Yeah. Uh, the Churchill, um, I, said, I said this before on the channel, when I first got into Flames of War, I started looking at some tournament results, and it was when, when mid version 4 started with the mid-war. Yeah. Eight of the top ten in this, in this tournament um, that I looked up were Churchill lists. <laughs> 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 because they're, they're, they're pretty close to being indestructible. Because um, you've got front armour of eight... Side and rear of seven, and you've got that six pounder gun with an anti tank power of ten yeah. and a fire power of four up. You know, this thing really deals deals the damage. Yeah. They are 11 points a tank, they're, they're no joke, but they're, they're a bit, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's only really 88s that they have to fear, and even an 88 has only got a 50 50 chance if it hits. 
Of course, the downside of this is maximum speed of 15 miles an hour. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, which is reflected in yeah. its road dash of 14. Yeah. It does cross on a 2 plus because it's got enormous tracks and it weighs a ton. Yeah. Then no, no tree or yeah. stone wall is going to stop this vehicle. Just on, just on 40 tons, this vehicle. 40 tons yeah. for a 1942 vehicle. Yeah. yeah. The, the, the Mark 1s and 2s also had that whole mounted howitzer. Which was then swapped out for a machine gun. So mm. this is the, the. I think because tactically it just wasn't being used. Yeah. Um, and it's um, yeah, it, it, you know, taking up a lot of space and so yeah. forth. And it just it just didn't get used. So this is the, the recommendation for this set is the the Churchill three with a six pounder, mm. which is what fifty seven millimeter. Yeah. Uh, right. And again, she's <clears throat> she's careful. Only hit on fours. She's confident. But she has counter attack rating of three plus because she's an infantry yeah. tank, sir. We've got protected ammo remounting on a three and a four up skills. On a four up skill, I wouldn't be chancing it probably that yeah. often with you know blitz moves, follow me, that kind of yeah. stuff. So the Churchill as a tank is, is like the final step of the British infantry tank philosophy yeah. in, in World War II. And nobody else was doing this after 1939. Yeah. So infantry tank, bad idea. And the Germans certainly got hold of a Churchill and said that this is just a desperately bad tank in every way. They got hold of it at Dieppe when they got stuck on yeah. the shingle and didn't go anywhere. However, the same year, in Tunisia, German uh, holding there's a big hill outside of, um, oh, is it, is it Tangiers? But the kind of the last significant battle, the Germans are holding, holding this hill, which dominates the landscape around it. And they're pretty confident that they're largely unassailable on this hill. And the Churchills just drive straight up it. <laughs> and yeah. they're like, no, yeah. mate, you can't depress your guns at this angle because you weren't prepared for this. Yeah. Churchill, infantry tanks, definitely an outmoded idea, but still had its place. Yeah. Right, right to the end of the war. Really and the, the many, many variants, the, you know, the flamethrower, crocodile, D-Day. Yeah, yeah. The yeah, the, the, the AVREs, yeah. armed vehicle, Royal Engineers. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. Been, yeah. You've got previous history with a petard, haven't you? I have been petarded in bolt action, sir. I certainly have. It's outrageous behaviour. Um, so, yeah, in terms of anybody who's got any British army, even even a late war one, because it's of course it's fundamentally the same sprue. It's not yeah. exactly the. It's not exactly the same. Where was the Churchill sprue? Here, yeah. So I think the way that the Churchill sprue works is a bit like the Tiger, if you've seen that. So the, in their factory, there's another bit here. Yeah. And depending on which kit you get, that so the the centre part is pieces that are common, so you've got the lower yeah. hole, the upper hole, the tracks and so forth, um, and some of the pieces. And then on the opposite sides, you have so with the late war one you've got the option to build like the Churchill Crocodile and it's got the trailer and yeah. so forth. Whereas this one you've got on more of those earlier options with the two pounder. Yeah. It says the mid mid mid, mid war mark two and mark three turrets yeah. and and then and then the Weapons, common pieces, yeah. yeah. So yeah, I mean, it, just to look at it, it's just a, it's a monster, isn't it? Yeah. This is the kind of tank that is supposed to crush cars and <laughs> you know get God, get in there. So really like that, and and and, and a really versatile. Tank. Again, you stand next to one of these at the, at the tank museum or wherever. They are beasts. They are seriously. Yeah. yeah. And and they've got more armor than a tiger. Yeah. Crusaders, Crusaders. Oh, and look at these, um, and you start seeing them sort of like the modern Challenger. You just sort of like look at it, you know the the low mm. rank, the big turret. Oh, uh, it's a it's a beautiful tank, the Crusader. Yeah. I think it really is with that kind of distinctive uh, turret and so forth. So just while we're in here, the the formation it's recommending you're getting six Crusaders in this set, and it's suggesting that you build a Crusader armored squadron. This is your HQ company. The Crusader Armoured Squadron has got three or four tanks in the HQ and then has two to five other Crusader Armoured Troops. So the Crusader 2 um, is, is your standard two-pounder Crusader. And the but two of them in this HQ, so the question is whether you take one or two with a two-pounder, yeah. is, is the ones with the three-inch. So this is the CS version of club yeah. support. And actually, most of the cruiser tanks, like the A-10s, the A-9, all, all of them, they have CS versions of them, and they're ones with the three-inch motor. But when you look at the what ammunition was carried, it's not actually for infantry support. Yeah. This vehicle mostly carried smoke. Yeah. 
Like something like half the ammunition is smoked. And you're looking at that and you're thinking, why would you have two he two tanks in the headquarters section that seem almost entirely exist yeah. to have smoke? And you only get the CS tanks in there. Oh, that's that's where Flames of War puts them in their order of battle, where exactly they fit. But I suspect it's a response to the desert conditions. Yeah. That there's, it's so, it, it, in a lot of the battlefield environments where you're attacking, it's so open, yeah. it's so exposed, there is no better route to assault this position. So they've got, they've got local direct fire smoke support. I don't know, I'm not sufficiently familiar with this, with the tactics employed, but it does seem yeah. odd that you have these howitzer tanks that mostly have smoke ammunition. Yeah. Now, but the box also says you can build the, the Mark III six pounder. You can also, yeah. So you're going to build a, a mixture of these to make your force legal. Now, it's just occurring to me that the standard Crusader troop has got three Crusaders in it. And how many do we get in here? Six. Six. So I don't think you can build a legal army. <laughs> You can build. You may replace one Crusader armor troop with a Grand armor troop. Ah. So, right. So your force is going to consist of the headquarters, which is of the six. So you're going to have the three tank headquarters. Yeah. You're going to have the three other Crusaders, and then you're going to have the Grants, and that's your formation. Yeah. So the Crusader, th the Crusader three. Um, you don't get ones that are exclusively Crusader threes with a six yeah. pounder you get the option to have up to two of them can have six pounders and you pay a couple more points. Do you get the penalty? Because the Crusader 3 actually was only a three-man crew. So. The Crusader 3 is over what? Yeah. So you do. <laughs> is there only two guys in the turret? Yeah. To accommodate the bigger gun? Normal four crew. Um, yeah, but the, the Mark III. Three, three. Yeah. Right. So. Okay. But the yeah. difference between those, so your Crusader 2... It's got three front armor. Your Crusader three has got four front armor, so it's pretty poor. You didn't have to worry about those yeah. uh, Italian uh, tanks. Um, but the two pounder's got an anti tank of seven, and the six pounder's got an anti tank of nine. And when yeah. you compare that to the Axis tanks, you really need that higher firepower. There's a lot of criticism of the two pounder. Yeah. And the British Army probably hangs on to the two pounder for a bit too long. But it goes back to this thing I said before about production. After the retreat from Dunkirk, we really haven't got anything. So it's it's not just about saying, well, yeah. you should have put a better gun in this tank. Said, yeah, but if we did that, we wouldn't have a tank. We've got tanks and no guns to put in them. How? What gun can we make quickly in sufficient numbers to equip our infantry and give them some capability? Was it a mistake? Probably. The six pounder <clears throat> took too long to come online. But I don't know how much earlier they could have done that. I think they yeah. were doing it as fast as they could. Yeah. Um, which is why you get these mixed formations. Yeah. But uh, as a model, though, oh, as, yeah. a, as a thing to look at, beautiful. So all the options are on there. You've even got the, um, the sweatbox machine gun dustbin. Yeah, so the Crusader one. You want to tell them about that? Yeah, well, uh, left hand, uh, sorry, the right hand side of the, um, the tank was a mini turret with the machine gun in it and uh, apparently the when they got over into the desert the person occupying that got cooked yeah so. <laughs> exactly. they just they just stopped crewing it quite yeah. quickly because the guy would just pass out in there from head melting <laughs> <laughs> and then um, they started welding them shut and then i think it's the crusader two but it might be the three they yeah. definitely they remove it and replace it with just a hatch later yeah um but the crusader ones definitely had the turret i don't know if the crusader twos did i don't know no, i think it was definitely the, the, the crusader one so two different turrets on there only the one turret pin so you got plenty of options to build for the mm. the army force but yeah yeah and if you and if you three guns the 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 two pounder is the is the long one with this type of mantlet yeah. The three inch is the short barrel, but it's slightly wider with this uh, this bubbly mantlet. And then the six pounder here. Now this piece was actually a bit funny because it, so it, it doesn't have a mantlet, it fits in this, this diamond shaped yeah. box. And there is a right and a wrong way around to put it. And I'm trying to, I think British machine guns are all on the left. 
I'm wondering if I can see on the box. Yeah. So as uh, yeah. when you're assembling the six pounder version, because you can get the gun in the, you can put it in the wrong way around. And I think this is, you know, sometimes I said about sometimes 3D instructions, it's not entirely clear. Yes. I think, I have a feeling that this was one of those moments where the instructions I'd had previously. Hmm, huh, interesting. Because the, the two pounder and the three inch man are the machine guns on the other side. But anyway, this one, the machine gun goes on the left. That might have been the design because of the um, the dustbin turret on the... Mm. So it gives it field of fire if you put it on the left yeah. side. But yeah, yeah. a di different crew arrangement and sorry. Yeah. So you, you can build a few different... Um, and so it, with the, the... We said about the two and the six pounder, where's the Crusader CS? So you will have a pair of these, so you could fire it as a rubbish artillery battery. Um, it's only got a 32 inch range. Um, an anti tank power of two and a four up firepower, but it is some artillery. Yeah. And you cannot have a Crusader headquarters without having those two tanks. <laughs> so you need to decide what you're going to do with them, really. But when you have a, a, a rubbish tank like a Crusader as a headquarters, if you have just one, you just hide it, right, for force morale. Yeah. When you've got three of them and two of them have got a howitzer, Needs to think about employment of those, yeah. and that, and I never did come to a rational decision about the way to do yeah. that. So not built them. Looks a nice kit. We have a, strange bits on the turrets have got holes in that you put different parts in depending on. But yeah, yeah, there's there, there's different hatches yeah. uh, for that. So uh, what did you want next? Uh, the M3 Grant. The M3 Grant is one of this um, lend lease. Yeah. Vehicles, so um, the Grant and or the Lee, as it was in American yeah. service. This is a 2017 Spruce, so it's part of the in initial release. Um, this will make you three versions of tanks. Yeah, it'll make you the the Grant in British service, and it'll make you two different types of Lee. Yeah, but let's have a look at the stats. So you, this is kind of a compulsory part of this force if you're using this kit. <clears throat> because it's taking the place of one of the Crusader squadrons. So you've got a front armor of five, which given light anti-tank is gonna really struggle to go to deal with that. I know it's only one more than four hall, which we saw the crew, but if you're moving closer and closer to being impossible to be damaged by. But a 24 inch range, anti-tank power nine. This is with the whole mounted 75, which has got the forward firing limitation. The secondary weapon in the turret has got an anti-tank power of seven, five power four up, but it has that secondary weapon rule, which means you basically you fire the whole whole weapon. Afterwards, you can take one shot with the turret weapon, and it's got plus one to its hit number, as in it, the the number it needs to roll is higher um, than that. But they come in threes, fixed. They're not 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 three to five. They come in threes at eighteen points. It's a pretty solid tank for the period. It's big. It's tall. It's a very, it's big, very it's tall, tall tank. But it's got the it's got the seventy five mil yeah. gun. Um, so what what about the sprue then, Mike? It's straightforward. You know, you've got the running gear from the the M three M four series keyed. Yeah. Um, all the different various options. The the whole mounted gun. It still looks funny to me. You've got. Mm. A bottom mount, which then you put the gun in with a pin, and then there's a turret section that goes over the top. There's, a, there's like a cap. There's a cap. Yeah. So um, the, the, I think the design idea is that it's going to allow this gun to swing. Um, and, and if you don't put too much glue in there, it will turn a little yeah. bit. Um, you've got two guns on here. I'm pretty sure that all the British ones, you've got the smaller of the two guns. The Americans have a longer gun, which has got better yeah. anti-tank power later. It may be the British all use the longer one, but I think they all have the shorter one. Because we have these earlier, yeah. and we and then we get Sherman's later. You get like a lot of their desert kits, you get a nice little yeah. bit of tarp, you get some external stowage. The stowage bins are tapered because they have to go on this sloped rear hull. Yeah. And actually, you want to put them on because there's there's um there's a raised section for them to, yeah. to key into, which it probably looks quite strange if you don't put those storage yeah. bins on the back. One of the boxes has got an axe molded onto the top of it. Yeah, yeah, which um, is which is nice. And you have the option to put skirts on it, which again, yeah. in the desert, I think you would. 
The, the, the 37 mil gun yeah. goes straight on, looks like it goes straight onto the upper turret. It's very, very, it's almost like a, a 50 cal, you know, on the Sherman's. It's right, yeah. Quite a, quite a tiny bit. So that one of the features of the smaller the models are, the bigger a problem that yeah. is. In truth, almost every gun barrel you're ever going to see in a 15 mil plastic kit is grossly overscaled. Yes. Um, compared to how big they are in reality. But that's because they can't just give you a wispy stick coming out the front of everything. But, you know, when they said this is a 37mm gun, and this is a 1 one hundredth scale. Yeah. <laughs> what, you want a 0.3 of a mil? Do you? Is that yeah. really what you want? No, of course yeah. that's not what you want. And yeah, and some concessions have to be made, in truth, to, the, to, to make the scaling yeah. work. Yeah, I'm saying not put one of these together, but I think it'll just go straight together with the Sherman. Two turret pins, so if you're going to build the Grant and the Lee for yeah. various options, so... Yeah, I mean, you paint them quite differently, but yeah, yeah. definitely. So none of that's getting you got, what was it? It was three of them in, which yeah. is exactly the right number that you need. Or I'd, or I'd use the spare pin for the other um, Crusader turret, yeah. there's only one on there. Absolutely. So we're getting close to the end now. Yeah. One more vehicle, Sprue. Well, yeah. Which has got two vehicles on yes. it. Yes. Daimler Armoured Car and the Dingo Scout Car. Made by Daimler. Made by Daimler, yeah. <laughs> right. These are both Daimlers, but one of them is a Daimler Dingo. Yeah. So on the box, it said that you're only going to get one Dingo. Yeah. And two of the Daimlers. Is, is, is it that way around? Two Daimlers, six, uh, two pounders, and one Dingo. Yeah. But actually, but, I knew how the sprue was constructed. Now, yeah. the Dingo... It is a subsection of this bro, but it seemed unlikely to me that they would yeah. they would separate this bit out. Although they're, they're perfectly within reason to do so, because yeah. it does it does snap down that line. Because I've had I've had these late. Well, don't worry, uh, that wasn't as risky as it might have looked. They are actually two separate vehicles and, and two separate spoofs. So the Daimler armored car troop, though, three points there, and the the, the snag with the Dingo here is you can only use one of them. Yeah. Because the unit is two Daimlers and one Dingo, fixed. Whereas late war, you can add an extra Dingo. Anyway, um, so you get two Daimlers, one Dingo in this unit, and it's only three points. And the great thing about that is that's gonna give you the spearhead rule, which is gonna allow you advanced deploy your force for very, very cheap, three points. And they've got uh, the scout rule, which means that they remain gone to ground whilst moving. So as long as they're in cover, they're going to be concealed, gone to ground. They're going to be quite difficult to hit. Front armor, one. Side and rear armor, one. Top armor, zero. <laughs> but, um, and, and that's, they are vehicles, so they've not got that infantry save thing to protect them. So if this gets shot at, it is going to die. Uh, careful, four plus. Motivation is confident. Now, it does have terrible last stand and counter attacks and assault ratings. All of that is because it's a recon unit. Um, and British Recon is very much about scouting, not about fighting for information. Tactical move is only eight inches and cross four plus. Move it at the beginning of the game to where you want, <laughs> deploy it where you want it to go. Um, because it's got a road dash of 36 though. Late game, that's gonna get yeah. you a long way across the table if, if the odds are favorable, because the cross country dash is only 14, which is significantly worse than a tank. Yeah. These are not fast if they're not on the road. The two pounder gun and some machine guns on the dingo. The dingo looks like it's a 303 Bren from the. Well, the weapon on it? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Uh, yeah, it's a Bren. Okay, bonus question. Bren, where's the name from? Brussels Enfield. It was a joint Belgian um, British collaboration just before the start of the war. Was it? No, was it Bruges? No. Uh, it's Czech. It's Bruno or something oh, right. like that. I thought it was Belgian, but it BR is that, and then EN is Enfield. Yeah, yeah. it's a, it's a, I, I'm pretty sure it was a Czech, it's a Czech like machine gun yeah. that was built under license by Enfield, or maybe slightly modified. Yeah. So we're going to go after this and discover that it was Belgian. I'm completely <laughs> wrong, because um, it's making me nervous now. <laughs> I just can't remember the name. Um, but yeah, uh, that nice little unit. I, I like the option. Units like this can be really important in your force yeah. when you're playing to a points level. And you're like, you know, oh, what what unit 
I've got a few points left over. Because these, you know, units of tanks are going to be yeah. tens of points. So having a bit of flexibility to take these in or out. So, yeah, I, I, I like the look of this model. I've got the, the Jeeps in my American oh, the armored Jeeps infantry. Oh, are beautiful, aren't they? And this looks just as good. You know, you've got upper hull, left and right, and lower yeah. hull. Four, four parts. Yeah. Um, so it's a bit more like the universal carrier to build, if, you, if you've built any I've of those. I've not built those, but... In that you've, you've got a central piece to which you peg the two sides and the top. So this central piece doesn't make a lot of sense in terms of the shape of the vehicle. Yeah. It's, it's designed a piece of plastic to hold yeah. the exterior shell. But yeah, this is a what? One, two, three, four, five, six, six seven pieces. So you've got the four pieces. holes, um, a front shield for the gun mount, and then a rear piece. And then the Daimler, similar principle. Yeah. Four pieces, and then lots and lots of turret pieces. Yeah. Nice it's, big spare wheel. Yeah, absolutely. So the, the 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 dingoes a cute little car. The the yeah. Daimler's starting to look a little bit more like an armoured car. And there's a whole series of British armoured yeah. cars, like the Staghound and the Humber, that yeah. look very much like this. Yeah. They're, they're, they're tall, dumpy, pig-like looking <laughs> armoured cars, but they do the job. And and, uh, and over time, they you know when you think they're sort of like the, the later ferrets and that that the, mm. the in the eighties armies and that they're just not very much different. No, the, the yeah. same same kind of look, same kind of... Now, this is the same Daimler that you're going to get if you get a, a, a late war one. So there is, there's no option to use it on this card in this setting. But you do have the Little John Pipsqueak on there, yeah. which is um, a, a sort of mid to late war adaptation to the two pounder gun. It's a squeeze ball. I don't quite know how, how that works but it kind of compresses the energy and, and, and the round, which improves its penetration. And it looks like somebody's just stuck a, a funnel <laughs> <laughs> on, on, on the end of it. Um, it's the Little John adapter, mm. and, and uh, they call it the, the Pip Squeak. Yeah. It's like, why has it got two nicknames? It's probably one is the gun and one is the, one is the modification. I don't know, but it, it, yeah. So the, this is a this is a versatile kit. Yeah. If you didn't want this particular scout unit for your desert war, you can still use this in the late war. No, just looking at on on the, the the turret side, there's smoke launchers as well. So yeah, yeah. Um, right. Well, that brings up another interesting point. Now that you mention it, so with this injection molded plastic, one of the things that that causes problems is having too much depth. They 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 really struggle yeah. to get the detail crisp, and it's why. Things they're as lateral as possible. Where you often get problems, then, in terms of definition detail, is things like smoke launchers in in flames, or because they will stick out of the main yeah. shape and often upwards. So that's really changing how the plastic has to interact mm. in the injection mold. So if you've ever got a kit from Flames of War and thought, why on earth have I got this tiny little piece separate? from the rest why couldn't they just mold it on the whatever then the answer probably is if you see some of the things like i think the chieftain that the uh, smoke launchers are molded on and they're really low fidelity they just can't get the quality of finish on it so often when the angle is funny they put yeah. them on a separate piece which is what's happened here yeah because with the chieftain they're pointing in three different directions because they're not aimable they're fixed yeah so it's in the the six launchers on both each side well three on each side and it throws it in a pattern yeah and then you've got to get out again and reload it all right nice <laughs> nice so that's the daimler and the dingo really yeah. I, lo I love me a cute little arm and, and yeah they just look cute and dinky on yeah yeah, yeah. and it doesn't isn't michael kane in, in one of them dingoes in uh bridge yeah. too far and the dingo and that, if you're old enough action man's armored car is it <laughs> that's action man's armored car right yeah. Uh, yeah, and they're just nice, it's something like yeah. that, you can just park it next to a building or whatever as a bit yeah. of battlefield scenery without any crew in it. Almost done! So, tank commanders, we got You the... didn't want to talk about the £25? I'm going to go, I've got the tank commander. You've got the tank commander in your hand, right? So, Every, I mean, if you haven't seen this yet, this, you're brand it's... new here then. Yeah. Um, the tank commanders, the British tank commanders, um, they're, not, they're nice, so... There's some really dinky ones in here, yeah. which are which are like busts of men. Yeah. Um, 
they actually turn out to be quite useful when you put them in the Crusaders because they have, um, at least one of the versions, the hatch is, is quite bright and there's like a there's like a trough into which you put the crew. So if you want a guy who's just kind of just popping his head out of the out of the turret um, out of the hatch, these couple of really low down guys with goggles on and so forth works very well. Yeah, yeah, pretty straightforward. Six and then there's three sprues in here. Yeah. So yeah, there's enough. There's enough. Tank commanders for every vehicle in the box to have a tank commander. I think that's strictly necessary. Uh, so, twenty-five pounder. Twenty-five pounder sprue you've got here. You've got one, two, three guns on it. Um, you've only got the twenty-five pounder field troop, which is deployed as a two or four gun battery, and it's got a firepower rating of four plus um, and an anti tank rating of three. Eighty inches as artillery. But interestingly, direct fire, 24 inches, anti tank nine. Anti tank nine yeah. is not bad. And the problem with that is that's what makes this artillery cost a reasonable amount. Yeah. Um, it's going to cost you 14 points to deploy all four of those guns. And that, that could be another unit of tanks, depending on your ammo, or two in the case of some of the junk you can get in the Allied forces. Yeah, pretty standard. I like this, it's got a limber on it. This has got a limber on it, yes, yeah. it has, um, and it's got. It's even got open and closed doors. Yes, yeah, I'm just looking at yeah. that. Yeah. I, 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 I built some of these. They're nice, and the three guns you've got on here, they're, they're very much small, medium, and large. Yeah, the early war one is the smallest of these three guns. That's the kind of uh, early pattern, yeah. which is still perfectly, very much the desert. The medium sized one is just the late war twenty four pounder. 25 pound. I don't know when it comes into into service, but with that with that double baffled muzzle brake there, that's the kind of thing that you're going to see in Northwest Europe, maybe in Italy, maybe even in Tunisia. But it's an incredibly long one. So as the 17 pound uh, was the was the gun that was going to defeat Nazi tanks, and that turned out to be a real winner. But it didn't fit in anything that, yeah. <laughs> that we had. And while they were still developing a a proper gun carriage for the 17 pounder in infantry service they they jimmied it onto a 25 pounder gun carriage but you're only gonna see that i think in tunisia yeah maybe el alamein i'm not i'm not sure but it's like it's a stop gap weapon in, in northwest europe everything is brand new They've got proper twenty-five pound, uh, proper seventeen pounder gun carriages, yeah. but in the Mediterranean, you're going to see that 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 very long one. So you, the profile of that is not on here. It, it is a it is a different weapon. It just has it's all of the other bits common to it. Yeah. So I like I, the 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 wheel rotating device has always been weird when you see it. And so like, where where does that stow when they move? But having the limber on it, I like. And then it's got the two different shells. Yes, um, fired and unfired as well for a bit of yeah, yeah, a bit of battlefield yeah. scenery. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, well, so when you build these, um, as I've 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 got some of these, I've done desert ones. Is there's a lot to fit on the base, as as well as as well as your crew, which yeah. we'll talk about in a minute. But you've got your limber, you've got your gun, but your gun needs to sit on on this plate. So you see the the teeth stick into the ground. I believe the gun is actually held in this, like the gun is somehow pinned to this yeah, base. Yeah, so there's a, a, like a pintle mount and the yeah. whole chassis. And so they, they, they can <clears throat> easily adjust it, but it isn't moving back, yeah? Because it's got, um, you know, a hydraulic reciprocating rod yeah. for uh, for that. It doesn't it doesn't need to move. And th they seem to think it made uh, aiming quicker and, e and easier to do redirecting but you've got to put that base on you and then the gun and then you've got to fit four guys around it and then you've got this limber and it's all going on the same size base <laughs> as a pack 40 which is just two split legs and four guys it does it does fit on but if you're someone who like me um i tend to like my guns separate from my bases so that if the unit Ooh. is destroyed the gun can be left behind again doesn't work so well with this because you've got a guy sat on it <laughs> it's like oh yeah, yeah. um but 
I ended up putting tufts on my bases and I hadn't glued the gun on. And then when I tried to fit the gun around the crew that were glued on there, <laughs> and it was quite a th it's quite a thick deserty tuft. Yeah. It was like, I no longer have anywhere I can put this. There's no space <laughs> big enough to accommodate it. I mean, that's, that's you know, you're not as stupid as I am. Yeah. Um, but there is a lot to fit on that base. Uh, yeah, it, it looks a complex model for uh, the artillery, but I think it goes it should go to bigger than nice. Yeah, it, um, it isn't nearly as complicated as it looks. A lot of these pieces are unused. You know, half of it's that limber. Yeah. 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 The crew then. So um, these, again, the crew that we've got in here, these are with uh, of thermoplastic type. They seem the same poses as we've had in other materials yeah. before. Um, and it's a uh, one, two, three, four, five, six man crew. Yeah, two different um, shells being held. By, yeah. Um, we've got the swab guy. You don't normally see the... Yeah, yeah, I've got me, I've got me sponge here, yeah. boss. Yeah, the swab guy. So it's actually a five man crew because one of them, the long shell is for the 17 yeah. pounder and the shorter one is for the 25 yeah. pounder. And one of the crewmen, which again helps with the spacing, is actually sat on, there's a, there's a seat, there's the gunner yeah. seat. Um, yeah. There, now, yeah. Talked about these before and various others of them. The, my, my swab guy, has got a lot of flash over the front of his face, so he's sort of like almost side-on profile. It's almost like he's wearing a beekeeper mask. And right. A few of the others just look a little bit rough and quite a solid mould line on the he on the helmets as well. So, yeah, I think so I've got a dodgy one. You, you, you do. I th I, I've come to the conclusion that it, 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 it's not the process, it's, it's quality yeah. control. Because the ones that I've got here... Are, yeah. are really nice. You compare those. Yeah. I mean, you've got a mold line on the helmet, but show yeah. me a show me a model you've ever bought that doesn't have a mold line down the centre. Yeah. The question is, especially in something yeah. like a helmet, how pronounced is it? Yeah. This is definitely. Yeah. We can. There is a. There's a marked yeah. difference, isn't there? Yeah. Um. So you know, uh, they, they, they seem to be coming forward with that. The only other thing to mention, I think, was the decals, right? Yeah. Yep. So you get these two British Desert decal sheets. Um. Now, so what you've got at the top, the yellow, blue, and green, they're squadron and troop markings. So you're probably as well following the process on the box art. There is a very complicated system for how British desert uh, markings work and the colors and the shape, they all matter. <laughs> and I can't <laughs> tell you off the top of my head. Um, so too, so this middle set of badges are divisional badges. Um, so, for example, you've got the desert wrap there, but that logo wasn't used quite widely until later. Yeah. Um, and then the units, the regiment numbers within the brigades, you might have seen documents telling you that tank brigades are 50, 51, 52, etc. In the desert, they're not like that. That's 21st Army Group. Um, and I can't tell you which ones go on which, but it will... But at any given moment, certain regiments had certain tanks and a certain number. Best way around that. Again, I would look at the box art. If yep. there is a Crusader in the world with the number 40 on it, then put that number on all of yours because it's the regiment number. But if yep. you've used that regiment number on your Crusaders, then your other tanks are not going to be in the same regiment. We did at least have the good yeah. sense to issue different tanks to different regiments. I'm sure about the roundels, though. I'm not sure. The roundels? Yeah, but they're just cool, aren't they? Yeah, oh, they are. <laughs> they're I'm, just I'm, cool. I'm, I'm, I'm looking at, my, at the models and I'm thinking, where would I put one? I, I... <laughs> well, it's entirely possible that they make a single decal sheet and that's to go on, um, you know, a, some sort of bomber. They make resin aircraft. Yeah. And, yeah. and they, they only do one desert decal sheet. Um, but I don't know. Does the Desert yeah. Air Force have roundels? Because that's yeah. huge. But that's what I'm by, <laughs> yeah, that's massive. The only thing I'd go to think on is maybe support trucks or something like that on the roof of them, or yeah. I mean, just put it on yeah, the but they look, they look good. good. They I'd, look I'd, good. I'd say I, I can't. I'd, I'd like to know where I could put them on the tank, regardless. <laughs> I'd, I'd like. I'd like to use them. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right, that, that's our look at this. I think we covered everything. It's all quite scattered over the table yeah. now. If we've missed anything, I mean, there was some bubble wrap, right? Yeah. Um, if you are looking to start a desert late war force, is this a, is this a good buy? Well, it is and it isn't. 
it's good value for the models in there and it's got a good range of equipment in there but that's maybe the snack because i think if you if once you reach a certain level of play certainly when you want to spend this type of money i think is you probably want to pick which formation it is you're going for and if you're doing crusaders do you really want the lees or yeah. did you want more crusaders or did you want more church Th this is great for experiencing many of the different tank types but i imagine most people by the time they're ready to buy a box like this probably know which type they want yeah i'm, I'm, I'm thinking you know you the your lees uh, sorry your grants are grants and your churchill's is one model of churchill mm. you've not got very much scope the, the crusaders you can you can vary those yeah but you're still quite narrow yeah and what you're building there's only two or three options whereas mm. some of the other boxes you can build whole different armies because mm. of just changing the yeah if you've got the tobruk starter set and then you've got on to get this you've probably got a bit more flexibility in that because you're getting more of tanks that you've yeah. had before maybe you do have the right number i think i think it's a good buy and it's something that i'm happy with but i realize that it's at a price point that it's 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 not a, it's not a clear cut outright winner because some people won't want half the plastic that's in this set um, if they've already got a substantial collection but if you're new to it and you want to try them all out i still think it's great value and frankly if you're buying the platoon boxes you get half as many tanks so it may be that if you do just want the crusaders this may still be the right one for you because the other stuff is all but effectively free all right that's it from me thank you for watching bye 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 Hello! If you're enjoying our Flames of War content and considering getting one of the starter sets or starter armies, why don't you think about buying one from our online web store at modelingforadvantage.co.uk? Thank you.